This winter will definitely be different than the years prior because we're gonna be going out to more places than we ever have before. This means that this winter, it won't just matter what you look like with your coat and your boots, but it's actually gonna matter what you wear underneath. So cue the holiday parties and the family get togethers and going back to the office even maybe. <laughs> so there's gonna be a lot of things that you want to build up your winter wardrobe for, give it a refresh. While I'm not one to adopt a ton of trends and and lose a timeless sense of who I am in my style, finding the trends that are upcoming are really important to sort of understand what you're seeing when you are shopping and you see clothes on the rack. You can see some inspiration that brands have gotten from runways and um, you know different designers might actually be infusing their taste into all facets of what we see on the shelf. So I'm gonna list out today the trends that I'm personally loving and I'm also going to disclose which trends I absolutely want to just pretend that they don't even exist because I really don't like them very much. So the first one is vinyl coats. Now I'm personally already so excited about this because I own one and love it so much. I use it as my primary raincoat because it's got an amazing hood and a lot of compliments are given to it because while it's just a regular black coat, the shine on it is such an unusual texture that it draws a lot of attention all on its own. So what's wonderful too is that this is a nod to the Y2K style. There is a craze about the 2000s like there's never been before. It just keeps building and seeping into everything. So you'll be able to dress in something that is very unique and very trendy, but still is something that could be very timeless and blends well into what you already own in your wardrobe. Next is oversized outerwear. So one thing that I love to do, even as a petite, is get some of my coats that are a bit more oversized in their nature because then I can layer things on underneath it and it still feels very comfortable. And honestly, it feels consoling. It's a step above comfort and it's something that is like healing to me that I can just wrap myself in something super comfortable. The way that you wanna style oversized clothing is something that is a little bit of a trick. So if you are petite like me, you can definitely subscribe and follow along to all the different ways that I style my clothes. But there are some other outerwear pieces that are oversized right now that I wanna mention. One is bomber jackets, and you can get a style that is oversized while still cropped if you wanna try that style. Otherwise, I would try an oversized blazer. And there's ways that you can wear blazers where you're cinching it at the waist or allowing a little bit of midriff to show there so that it feels like it's not overwhelming. Riding on the coattails of oversized outerwear is a bold shoulder, so when you're getting those awesome oversized blazers don't miss out on having some power up here at the shoulder placement and that is going to really create this fierce look that I think a lot of brands are trying to go for when they're thinking through all of these matching suit sets that we're seeing and it is something where you can create an hourglass proportion very easily with or if you want to build out your emphasis of your shoulders at all that is a wonderful thing that you can do there I also love to do this with any of my puff sleeve tops but I think that that here we're really seeing a lot more of the um, blazers and the sharp shoulders that we saw in the 80s. I feel like my mom always rocked an amazing blazer with awesome puffed like power shoulders and I just loved it. The next thing that I am so happy is a trend is Western touches. I personally already love boots that are Western, any cowboy hats. I love fringes on my jackets and different items like that. So you can do this very subtly. I have people who are in the UK who really don't wanna to touch a Western style because it doesn't feel like anything that wouldn't be too costumey for them. But there are ways that I tell them that they can use this. Just simply as having denim that's a little bit more distressed or having like a chambray or denim top is going to be a very subtle way that you can combine that with things that you already love like sweaters. Okay, I was on the fence about this next trend, patchwork. So one thing that I do love about this patchwork design is that even if you choose a patchwork design that has a bunch of different um, colors on it, you could create a very subtle design too if the designer kept that in something that is neutral. I have a denim jacket that has a bunch of different patches on it and that allows me to mix and match it very easily in my wardrobe more than the other denim jackets. What I don't like seeing is when this is on pants that are bulky, um, just for me because I have shorter legs. So this would truncate my legs even more 
but I like to infuse this also into ideas like um, boots or purses. Anything that's an accessory can work really well here. On that note, in researching for this video, I did buy some Steve Madden boots that are on their way and they have a beautiful brown patchwork design. And so that brings me to my next trend, which is brown is the new black. I am so thrilled with this because I feel like, especially for fall and winter, brown is one of those colors we do use, but not as heavily as like black and charcoal and gray. And this gets a bit drab pretty quickly. Instead, you can try to opt for some really rich, beautiful browns like a mocha or a chestnut or a coffee, or there's just different ways that you can infuse that with other colors. Um, I think that anytime that someone wears brown, they sometimes think, well, can I wear that with black? Or like, they feel like they can't wear it with as much, but that's just not true. If you look at animals and all of the different ways that you see brown in the fur of an animal, you might see that with black. Um, there's lots of different ways where you can pair your brown pieces with things that are very unexpected, and this is definitely the year to try that. Lastly, I wanna talk about trending fabrics. I feel like this really needs to stand alone because there are ways that you can wear those fabrics into all of the different trends I mentioned before. So let's highlight some of them that are extra special right now. So one is tweed. Chanel dedicated almost its entire line to tweed this year. And that makes me so happy because as someone who embraces academia style so heavily, I just feel like it needs to be one of those elements that I reach for this time time of year. It's one of those fabrics that is a little bit stiff and gives a lot of structure to yourself. So if you want more structure in your outfits, then tweed's a really excellent choice for outerwear and skirts and for bags. Like there's different ways that you can incorporate this fabric. Next is leather. I've been seeing a lot of leather trousers especially, but you don't have to just stop there. Um, leather skirts are amazing. I have a beautiful leather top that I love to wear. Um, there's just an abundance of this and I believe that it's even in all these matching suit sets that you know they aren't just like what you'd wear as a suit but you could also have like a biker style and dress head to toe in leather and one color and that looks amazing and next is corduroy you might have seen corduroy sort of creep into a lot of the different things that i've shown this season already and i do believe that it's just one of those fabrics that brings me a lot of comfort personally and i love the vertical stripe that's just naturally in a corduroy because that's very lengthening so this is not something that will go out out of style, I'm just so happy that it's coming more and more into style this season. As for the trends that I'm not adopting right now, I'll run through these kind of quickly, but the first one by and large is funky Y2K fashion. There's no part of my style that funky fits in. <laughs> That's not to say it won't fit into someone else's, but to me, I've lived through the Y2K. I don't necessarily think that it's something I wanna be nostalgic about. I don't think many people are nostalgic about middle school. <laughs> So that's kind of like a tug against that for me. Um, but I do want to adopt those small things that I mentioned earlier. Next is color blocking electric hues. For me, I think that the most electric color that I wear is like a red that has some orange infused into it or maybe an emerald green. But I would definitely not be embracing the Barbie pink right now and then color blocking it with things like orange like we saw in Legally Blonde. So this is something that I believe there is still room for if it's your personal style. Again, Again, I believe that trends do serve a purpose and they can be very empowering if you know your personal style and you know how to navigate that. But if you don't know how to, then it really becomes something dictated on you and you lose that superpower of feeling like what's in your wardrobe is serving you. So definitely proceed with caution with this. And if you're lost on your personal style, then you can go to dearlybethany.com and my personal style course is there to help guide you through this season and for the rest of your life. And with that, I will see you in the next video. Bye.